designing a Twitter background. Uh, this is like you saw in the Ford example. It had the Ford sidebar and everything like that on there. Um, most of the population right now is working on 1024 by 768. That's the square monitor, okay? Usually 17, 19 inch, something like that. The next popular size is 1280 by 1024, and that's the widescreen. So when designing the, the background, keep these two resolutions in mind. Couple of tips here. Um, this is short enough, you can probably write down. It's called uh, twtbg.me. And if you upload your, your Twitter background, it will show you how it's going to look in different browsers. And you can just click the buttons and it'll show you what it looks like. Um, at the 1024 by 768, you have 150 pixels to work. That's the sidebar on the side. Okay? If you design it for 1280 by uh, 1024, uh, you got 250 pixels, so you have a little more room. That's what we designed in was, was for that particular browser we feel our users are a little more savvy or so. Um, otherwise they have some backgrounds that you can pick. If you Google Twitter backgrounds you'll be able to find uh, several websites that have free backgrounds that you can choose. Uh, if you don't have uh, a designer on board uh, there, are, there are Twitter designers out there. Uh, we're a company that does that so if you need a Twitter background we can make you a cool looking one. Um, People embed company information, so when you do this thing, you know, it would be cool to have a phone number in there, the, the website address. These things won't be clickable or anything, but at least be on that, that, uh, that background. So if they want to contact you, they can. So this is actually our Twitter account right here. So up in the corner there, you see our logo. Um, you also see our phone number and our, our website address. And uh, this is what you're presented with if you click on the home button. So this is actually in the Twitter account right now. And uh, there's two main components. To the left, you got the tweets that are coming in. So these are people that I've subscribed to, I've followed. And those are coming in in real time if I click the refresh button. And that's the major problem right there is the major problem why you can't use Twitter by itself is that you'd, you'd have to sit there and click the refresh button over and over again in order to get the updates that people are actually sending you. And that's why the desktop clients are so popular. Um, Facebook is a different story. It actually auto-updates for you and that kind of thing. And that might be a feature that they add, but for right now, it doesn't do it. The other problem is, is that um, there are a lot of things that you can do, such as uh, you can look at at replies, you can look at direct messages, but you have to physically click on these links to see everything. So you're not getting the whole picture, you have to kind of investigate yourself to get to all this data. So the first pane, th th these are what people are saying right now. Over to the right, you got some columns. You got following tweets people uh, that you're subscribing to. So those are the people I'm wishing to subscribe to and I'm getting all their updates. Followers. People who are subscribing to your tweets. Um, so that's the, the second uh, figure up there at the top. So those are 2,800 people who are following what I have to say. And I didn't think I had a lot to say. Um, updates, number of tweets you have made. So in this case, um, I've made 344 updates. Those are the tweets. Uh, at username, these are people that have made comments towards you that are public on their own personal page. All right, so they, they did an at reply at you. It's visible on their Twitter page, and I also get a message saying that they, they said something to me. And this is where the dialogue kind of begins. So you might have a complete stranger out of the blue say an at reply and said, oh, I read that article that you just posted. Cool. You know, and you're going to see some examples of, of how to write these and, and read them and that kind of thing. But then you have to click on that to see what they said. Exactly. So just like she said, you have to click on that link to see what people are saying. And that, it's you're going to find that there's easier ways to do this. Direct messages. Now these are, are messages that people send directly to you. They're private and so they're not public at all. Uh, coincidentally, direct messages are kind of overused these days so a lot of people are spamming through them so a lot of people don't even look at direct messages anymore. What would you tweet about your business? You could constantly tweet about your 
what you're doing with your business or what? I mean, I can only talk so much about cleaning carpeting and leather sofas and doing floor work. I think um, to really be successful with it, you know, we're just normal people, okay? So you're going to find a lot more things to talk about than just business, business, business. And if you're constantly talking about business, um, people aren't going to like you because nobody wants advertisements shoved down their throat, okay? Um, so you're going to find that you're going to integrate and talk to people, and people post funny things, you know, funny things here. Oh, I just went to the Minnesota Zoo or whatever it is. And, oh, I was just there with my family. It's a great place, you know. Something as simple as that, uh, replying to somebody else. And so you're no longer a robot, you know, working for the company. You're actually a human being and you have feelings and you're talking to people and, you know, that kind of thing. And that's what you're really kind of looking for, you know. You're going to see some that, that I've actually done um, here in just a little bit. Uh, this is one way to follow. If you, if you just had a Twitter account, up at the top it says find people. You're presented with a little search box. You type in a topic or a name. And uh, you click on somebody's face, and you get to a page like this. You have to be logged in, of course. And then there's a follow button right underneath the picture. So you click on that, and then you're now following that person. So I wanted to diagram a little bit of how this all works together, because I think some people get a little hazy on this whole thing. So how do I receive tweets and updates? So this is assuming that you're following Twitter A and Twitter B, and just those two people. What's going to happen is that as they post tweets, you're chronologically going to get them in order via time. So if you're following 2,000 people, whatever everybody is saying is going to come in chronologically, and whoever was first, it, it dumps in there. That's why when I said it's, it gets disorganized, it can get disorganized very quickly because... Uh, there's so much stuff going on. I mean, Austin Kutcher, there's no way he can read a million you know, people and what they're saying and that kind of thing. And so the vice versa is true. Your tweet goes to those two subscribers if, if they're following you, and that happens to them. Your tweet is not public on their profile page. The profile page is what's, what's public on the web. So if I took my example, it's twitter.com forward slash TMA marketing. When I post a tweet, it's public on that page. So if you post an at reply or something like that, don't be, it's not going to go on the other person's page. That's just what they're saying. Tweets are small updates consisting of 140 characters, can include trackable links to images, content, and video. So you can post links to whatever you want. Uh, public on your page, everything is public on your page only unless you protect your account uh, or, direct, or direct message somebody uh, personally. So um, everything that you do is going to be seen by the public. So keep that in mind, whatever you're tweeting. So if you're working for a company, um, especially a public company, I wouldn't say anything about the company unless you were ordered to or it makes a lot of sense. In, in public companies, uh, you know, they have stock and things like that, and what you say can influence uh, the stockholder, so be very careful. Um, there was one incident, and this happened uh, this year with Yahoo, uh, when they had these big layoffs and everything like that. There was actually a woman that was talking about what was happening around the office and the morale and, and things like that, and so she got in a little bit of trouble with that whole gig. <laughs> 